So we are live. Oh, hello. So um, Deadly Tarantula Girl coming to you from my indoor studio. It's a mess. Um, so we, oh, first of all, I am uh, rocking my R&B swag. My hair's a bit of a mess, but it's shiny. So um, yeah. Um, so we are here today for the one year anniversary or follow up of the Crotalus Atrox bite with my one year and a producer so um let's see how much suffering have you endured in the last 12 months sir uh not much other than <laughs> the daily toil <laughs> doesn't look like anybody's on with oh it's 10 people watching hello everyone hey uh, guys we're right at a year when i got bit by a western diamond bat so let me give you a little bit of a background um we were last year one of our mentors contacted us and was getting ready to uh to sell out his reptiles which for the record it's a year later and now he wants to get back into it but uh so we went and we picked up a bunch of animals and the zoo was completely crowded for a month uh we had too many cages and and not enough room and so we spent weeks trying to get everything reorganized in there to, to make enough room and uh mexico royals you're on thank you so much for eating that cricket for us we yeah really appreciate it oh that was a good one i almost threw up cricket <laughs> legs still so one night it was getting later on in the evening about this time and it was pitch black out and it was about 40 degrees outside it was cold and i was we have a, a pile of, of wood in the back that we keep some of our spare stuff and i was just looking for spacers in between to put in between some cages and they were sitting under a board and it was dark it's december and if it would have been summertime i would have shined a light under there to see if there was anything under there well uh, i didn't and i stuck my hand under there and i felt a, a poking in my hand um it was my right hand and it was right here and I, I I was in shock. I, <coughs> I couldn't believe it. So I called. She was headed into the house. So I called her out and I said, hey, I think I just got bit. She walked over there and she had a light on her phone. She shined a light on there and we see a little Western Diamondback, probably, I don't know, maybe 18 inches of, at the most. And uh, I had two drops of blood on my hand. And I got bit by a western diamondback rattlesnake yeah so first he at first he uh was kind of describing just a little poke but then within about maybe a minute or two he felt burning and that's when he called me over there so we could look in the wood pile yep, yep. so at that time our other assistant was had that day for some reason he'd been talking about the venom lock which mm -hmm. is this item right here and uh wonderful product by the way we're going to talk more about that too and if for some reason we knew exactly where it was that day it's we've all you know we put stuff in in the zoo sometimes it gets moved around and you misplace something it takes you a couple minutes to find it well he knew exactly where it was and it was in the house so he ran in here actually just above here mm -hmm. and i uh, grabbed it and luckily that part of this is this device is a cone-shaped device and is is really meant for extremities or torsos not your not your fingers um it, it, it has to have a surface area to uh to be able to to lock that venom in place and luckily i just got bit in the in the absolute lowest place that i could have to actually put this thing on because the the cone in it opening this up for you guys so you can see it is pretty wide and so you need you need to have a little bit of meat to plug into yeah which i don't have this to strap off but it has to push down into your into your tissue to keep that venom in place and what the design of it what it's designed to do is hold that venom in one particular place so it doesn't travel through your lymph system into the rest of your body to give you time for medical attention so i i managed to get it on um you know completely covered the bite still had some some tissue around it so i could get it loculated and uh we went to the hospital mm -hmm. so we get to the hospital and by that time maybe by the time i get in back to the room 
it had maybe been 30 to 45 minutes so i'm not too far after the bite but it was had, pretty fast and i had that venom lock on within probably five minutes of getting bit maybe so, even faster than that yeah it was it was quick and it's hard to say it feels like hours when it's going on but uh it was pretty quick so we get to the hospital and the doctor had never seen one of these before so he uh he didn't really know what to do so he's, he's ordered anti-venom and one of the nurses that was in there kept wandering in and out she uh eventually came to came in after okay i'm, I'm not voicing this very <laughs> well so we get in there i start getting anti-venom within probably 45 minutes uh after i start getting anti-venom i take the venom lock off when that happened my arm swelled all the way up to my shoulder at least twice the size mm -hmm. and uh, uh the nurse came comes back in and she says i didn't think that you'd been bit by a venomous snake that that venom lock had worked so well keeping that venom in that little spot that uh it did my the rest of my hand looked normal until i took it off and then at that point my arm swelled up up so much that the er doctor said we're going to ship you out we've only got they gave me six vials of anti-venom and uh sent me to lubbock texas which is about three hours uh east of us mm -hmm. and life flighted me out and she got to go with so we get into that other er in, in lubbock texas and uh all of a sudden every doctor and nurse in the place comes to check it out because they couldn't believe that there was a venomous snake bite in december either so one of the doc the er doctor was seeing me at the time he uh he had actually heard of of the venom lock and dr hack the the developer of this of this awesome product who's an er doc and a toxicologist yes and uh so when i was there they stuck me into uh ccu uh was actually i was actually in the burn unit because that was the only place they had for me and at this time after the first six bottles of anti-venom the swelling had pretty much gotten as big as it was going to get and uh we had to stay in there for uh, I got I got there about 10 11 o'clock at night and they discharged me the next day about eight o'clock in the evening well they sent you to the CCU about two or three in the morning and then it was about 9 10 in the morning the next day that they just said you're basically doing better than anyone could have possibly expected they recommended that you follow up just with your general practitioner so yeah and um what the reason that i was flown out is because there's there's a, a situation that can occur that if you get so much swelling in your tissues it can cut off the blood supply to your extremities and it's called uh, compartment syndrome and the doctor was worried about that because we didn't have a physician on call here at our at our hospital locally and so during all that time until eight o'clock the next evening they did have a trauma surgeon come in and he was examining me and and all the student surgeons were in there because they wanted to check it out and uh they they felt that it was that it had pretty much run its course so it took 12 vials of anti-venom and uh they they let me go and we came home so i was out of work for a week and my arm stayed swollen uh, when I started out, I couldn't even close my hand that much. It was mm -hmm. so swollen up. And then as the week got on, by about day 10, I could touch these two fingers together. But the reason that we're doing this follow-up right now is just to let everybody know that in all the other cases of Aatrox bites that we've seen, including a guy that just passed away last year. What was his name? Bonnie, Bonnie Berry was just talking about it. Mm. He owned cop, Copper's... Um, Million counters out of Copper's Cove, Texas. The guy used to carry around. Don't come to me. The guy used to carry around a piece of bone from a Western Diamondback bite. He got bit by this by uh, Aatrox on his thumb, and his his bone actually rotted out of his hand before he went and seek sought medical attention. He was trying to heal it the way that the Indians used to, and it just didn't work out for him. Well, it did, but uh, he was one less digit afterward. Yep. And then we've had two other friends that actually did get compartment syndrome. So they, what they do in the case of that is they'll actually cut you open to let the flesh come out of your skin so that it doesn't cut down on your blood flow. And uh, both of those guys have pretty bad scarring. And as you can see, 
at this point in time, you can't even tell where I was bit. I was mm -hmm. bit right in this area. And <clears throat> the only possible effect I could have from it is that my thumb will not completely straighten out. But that could also just be from being an old man. <laughs> um, my other thumb, you can see the difference in the two. It just has a little bit more angulation. But he had trigger finger in that thumb from before this, yep. from a trauma in the gym. Because my man's a bodybuilder. An old man. <laughs> and uh, he doesn't anymore. So. Yeah. The, the thing about this Venom Lock is that we've had actual people, <laughs> statisticians. Um, what's the name of that guy? He did the Venom interviews. Ray Morgan? I believe so. He did. We did an interview with him. And he said Stop. that he didn't know how, how well this thing would, would actually work. But. You know, given the the amount of uh, uh, the 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 in field work that's happened <laughs> with it is it's a hundred percent because I'm as far as we know so far I'm the only person that's had that's had the use of this. Okay, hold on. The only human trial, although during um, while they were um, designing it, they did do several large mammal studies on pigs with really phenomenal results we should say hello to everyone who's on here um so quick hello to bobby evans lauren nelson matthew tarantula jake kevin trappin lorga jumped on for just a minute and then said he had to catch a flight jeff and maria zamora hi guys anyway so when he designed this as an ER physician, he, he just noticed that there wasn't anything that was really effective for a snake bite. And uh, what this, what this, uh, what he, what he wanted was this for was for the military. So if they're crawling on the field and they get bit in the stomach or on the extremities, they can quickly wrap this on and it'll give them time to get to medical treatment. Uh, this is not a medical treating device. This is just to give you time to get to medical treatment. So don't put this on and think you're cured because that's not the way it works. But with the design of it being oval the way it is, is that um, keeping that venom in that one area could cause some tissue damage depending on the species of snake you're getting bit by. <clears throat> and what he did is he designed it this way. And this was his, actually his redesign. The first one that he did was a little bit smaller and people had asked um, people that were professionals, I don't know if they were surgeons or other ER physicians, said you need to make it a little bit bigger just, just so that if there is trauma, it can be repaired. Well, and I think it was initially like more rectangular. And so he made it more of an oval shape. That way they could essentially excise the entire area and then um, just kind of close that wound if, if need be. If there was necrosis or a uh, very significant tissue damage. Yep. So this is not a tourniquet device, which we also had another person that said that it was a tourniquet device and, and got on the, the first yeah. video we did of this and said, do not use this. This product is not does not work. He is absolutely wrong. And he was pretty ignorant to come jump on like that and, uh, and just say that without researching it at mm -hmm. all. Um, unfortunately, so far, there have not been a bunch of human trials. There's only been one, which is me. Fortunately. Yes. However, we, in our experience, it was very effective. So it's $20. You can reuse it. It may save your life. It's portable. It's hygienic. It's weightless. It takes up almost no room in your bag or in your car or in your office or wherever. So if you live in any areas that have venomous snakes, it makes sense to have one. And obviously, if you work with venomous snakes, because unlike anti-venom, this works for any type of venom because it loculates the venom to the site of the wound uh, rather than allowing it to flow through your lymph system. You really cannot suck the venom back out. That's a myth. Uh, what you want to prevent, though, is that that venom going throughout your body before you can get to medical treatment. So this is just supposed to buy you time, which did. Yep, and if you were a hiker and you go out in the middle of nowhere, because we know a lot of people that'll spend days out, out. Or if you work out on the oil rig four miles from the city. 
you you should have one of these close to you at all times if you're out in the field and don't just think because it's getting close to winter time that that's it because people get bit all year long mm -hmm. we had actually had somebody locally i don't know if it was in texas or if it was here that had been bit either just before i did or right after i did and if they had a venom lock and they ended up um i think it was a pretty serious bite for them um I don't know how much da damage the venom did, but it was quite a bit. Uh, they it, the outcome would be a lot better for for people. Um, it's just a wonderful device, and I want to thank Dr. Hack for inventing it, and I want to thank Dana Severelli, Tongs.com, for selling this product, manufacturing uh, it, yep. and selling it. He he, these guys without once these things the data comes in from people actually using them, uh, the it's going to change the way snake bite is treated and there's going to be there's going to be a way more positive outcome if people start using these regularly um they just the 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 fact is is that the time that, that it gives you to get to medical treatment with cutting into the minimal amount of, or with the minimal amount of damage from having this device on is is going to be phenomenal but we need to get more of these products out there and we need to get uh unfortunately we're going to need some people to put them into use to to get that data out there so people will start um believing in the product because there's been a lot of people that have that have supported products in the past and it didn't work out for them because they were the studies that were done on them like the venom extractors they the people were pushed those hard and people supported them and then they come to find out that the data wasn't there for them they just aren't effective this is not the kind of device that's going to be ineffective this device is it's wonderful and well so to to give you some history so this is a this is different from a tourniquet in that it's a compression device so this basically follows the treatment that they're using in australia which is a country that has so many dangerous venomous snakes. So they're using compression devices in Australia to save people's lives. The data on that shows that compression is the way to go. This is a very simple device that anyone can use. You don't need any, any medical training. There's no danger whatsoever. Now, if you tourniquet your arm or leg, you can lose that limb. There is danger in that. There's no danger in using this device. So what it does is when it's sitting on your tissue, it still allows blood flow to go all yes. the way around it. So all it does is keep that venom in that one spot. Right. And that's that's the big thing that, uh, that everybody has been against is, well, what happens if you cut off the blood flow? In this case, you don't cut off the blood flow. Uh, the blood flow still goes to your extremities. Um, we checked, they were checking my fingers right when I got into the uh, emergency room to see if I still had, uh, you know, when you push on your finger, it kind of gets fleshy colored. And that means there's good blood flow because your fingers are very vascular. And I had full blood flow to my fingers. So basically the doctors, all the medical staff, they were literally astounded. Um, so some of the people in the hospital knew who we were. So they knew that we would know what we were talking about when we went into the ER, which is why, despite him having symptoms of envenomation, they did start the anti-venom right away. We knew what species it was. We knew how long it had been. We had this mysterious device. And so that one nurse was actually saying, I don't think you should be administering anti-venom. It's expensive. It's hard to get. And he was not envenomated. And she came in afterward and said, well, before you took that thing off, I thought you were full of crap. I thought that you hadn't been envenomated, that you didn't know what you were talking about. But my colleagues knew you and knew that you would know what was going on. And um, the physicians in Lubbock, too, were baffled. And they were, they were looking it up online. They were saying, I've never heard of this. This is amazing. I can't believe how well this has worked. And um, yeah. And unfortunately, what she's saying is what we're trying to avoid or, or fix, which is that only out of all the people that we dealt with, which was surgeons, two ER physicians, lots of nurses, only one person had heard about this device. And we want, we want to get the information out there so that you guys 
can be safer out in the field. And if you do deal with venomous, you need to have one of these because these are going to be a life changer and a lifesaver. Mm -hmm. they, the, there's just absolutely nothing wrong with this design. It's there. Even if you have the body, what you can do, if you get a body shot like me, I'm a little thick. <laughs> so if you were to get bit on the stomach, it would be good to have two of these on hand because the straps are pretty long. But well, you can order just a belt, just the extender okay. belt. Mm -hmm. So that would be something else that you might want to consider getting with just the Venom Lock. And they're very inexpensive. Uh, I think they're we're selling them for $24. We actually are... Mm, 20 Same price as the website. Oh, they're $20, mm -hmm. uh, including shipping? Plus shipping. So they're $20 plus shipping, which is $24. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Unless you come to my house. We fully endorse this product. Um, there's nothing to it that we have seen to be detrimental to, to a snake bite case, meaning there, no matter how this is used, even if it was used, if it's used improperly, the results are not going to be effective. But it's certainly not going to hurt anything if it is used improperly. Yeah, it's, basically it would be like you're not wearing it if you don't tighten it. Yeah. And if you do tighten it, people are saying, oh, what about the necrosis? What about the tissue damage? Okay. Or your life? I mean, if you already have a necrotic bite, would you rather have necrosis throughout your whole body or just that small area? I mean, use your brains. And I mean, what if it is the type of venom that's going to hmm, stop you from breathing? I think I'd want to keep it in that little spot. And that's and that's what it's designed for. It's for getting envenomation into one little spot so that it can be treated in that one little area instead of uh, if there are lots. If you go into Google and look up cobra bite uh, over in India and Asia, and you look at some of these bites, uh, these people are days away from medical care, and by the time they get there, their whole limb is almost entirely necrosis. There, are, there are people that have had most of the flesh off of their uh, just rotted off their leg by the time they get to medical care. With this, they're still going to have problems being days away from medical care, but it's going to, it, there should be no way that it doesn't reduce the effects of that envenomation and to give them more time to hopefully save that limb. It's, it's very important. Um, the, the world's changing and we keep moving into wild territory and, the more that we encroach on their territory, the more we're going to be interacting with these animals and the more people are going to get bit. And here in the United States, there's a lot of venomous snake bites. Uh, rattlesnakes, they do. They bite people. And most of the time, it's a farmer out in the field turning mm -hmm. bales or somebody in the oil field reaching for something and not seeing the snake. And if you have one of these on hand, the prognosis for you is already better than it would have been without it. There's just no way that it could hurt you. And the guy that, who was the guy that did the, the Skyless Foundation? Is it was, he's a sleepia? Is it a sleepia? What are you talking about? The guy that was knocking us for, for, I believe this. it was Jordan Benjamin with the Asclepia Snake Bite Foundation. Yeah. I, I, so from what I know, he believed it to be a tourniquet device. He referred us to Sean Bush's research. Uh, his paper that says um, venom extractors don't work, they just suck or something like that, which is true. Basically, he debunked the practice of using those, uh, and that was valid research. This is not a tourniquet device. That is where Jordan Benjamin was misinformed. He did not stop to look and listen to uh, find anything out about this device. He just jumped to a conclusion. He was attacking us online. Uh, being pretty ridiculous, if you ask me. And the guy is supposedly a herpetologist, although he looks like he's 15 years old. 14 and a half. So, I mean, the guy has some validity to what he's saying as far as his knowledge. What he doesn't know is this device. He just, he, he attacked it for no reason, and that's that's not good. Well, it, I think he had good reason, but it was based on misinformation. He thought that we were saying a tourniquet's the way to go. It's going to save your life. And so he was 
adamantly objecting and telling, commenting to multiple viewers, it's going to kill you. Don't do this. Don't listen to them. They're stupid. And he obviously, um, I feel like he had good intentions, but um, again, he was, I, I believe that he was basing his claims on misinformation, which wasn't our fault. That was his. Yeah. So if anybody knows Dr. Benjamin, or Jordan <laughs> Benjamin, whatever his name is, um, and he would like to discuss this, we're more than happy to discuss it. We could do a live like this with him, or mm -hmm. if he wants to talk about it in private, we're, we're open to that too. Because what we don't want is we don't want this, this device to not be put into use because people are ignorant about what it really does. We actually tried to reach out to him and asked if we could have a conversation with him in private or on a public forum and he didn't reply so so that's that's too bad for him because maybe he could have learned something and, oh, and maybe we could learn something from him yeah but what we know for sure is that the results from this are 100 percent so far i um it's me i mean look at that hand there's you can't even tell that's a beautiful that hand. it happened um there's just nothing there there's not any tissue damage nothing and I, I place all that on this. Um, it was it was a good bite. Just the fact that my arm swelled up so quickly, uh, it was scary. Uh, it, I've never. I mean, you always want to go to the gym and you want your arm to get bigger, but I actually <laughs> watched it get bigger, and it was scary. Uh, it was it was a, a, an eye opening experience, and I'm so thankful that we have one of these on on hand. So. If you are interested in this product or learning more about it, please hit us up. Like like we just said, um, we we are selling them now. We are proponents of these, and we want to get more out there so that if this happens to you and you happen to get bit by by uh, something that's venomous, uh, you have a way to, to counteract this. Um, these are also sold on Amazon or on the tongs.com website. So uh, we're just a distributor kind of locally. We take them with us to shows and stuff because we uh, work with venomous animals and some of the people that we know do as well. It makes sense that we have them. But um, you can get one online anytime, anywhere. So, And we've talked to several of our friends and uh, they purchased them from us because from what, they, from what we've been able to tell them and our experiences, they it made them a bit of a believer so they were willing to, they're willing to try it out if it the unfortunate events ever happen that they get bit i mean you think about it you waste twenty dollars going to mcdonald's or hmm, i mean what's the worst case scenario you threw twenty dollars down the drain for a piece of plastic that doesn't work no biggie but if you do get one of these uh, you need to put it in a place that, that you have access to it. Mm -hmm. So uh, the most common thing would be for somebody to uh, put it in their vehicle mm -hmm. because most of these attacks are going to be when somebody's fishing, when somebody's out working. It's not going to be like us where it's going to happen at your house. Sometimes there are people that have lots of venomous animals on their property, and if that's the case, then you want to have one in your truck and in your house. But uh, you, you – it's a product we, we wholeheartedly believe in, and we need to get more of these out there. Um, it's it's going to be a life-saving device, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to change the game of venomous snake bites all around the world. Um, we just need to get more of them out there, get studies done on them, and hopefully we won't even find a – hopefully there will be no negative situation where this – this the outcome is, is – would have been worse without it because as far as we can tell there is no way it like i said if you misuse it you're still going to end up with with if it, you had didn't have it at all but it's not going to make anything any worse unlike yeah. the circumstance in which a tourniquet could possibly make something worse so i know that's what some people that are opposed to um this device may be thinking Re studies are indicating there's no way this can make a bite worse and in our one circumstance it made it a whole lot better so anyway go ahead and post your questions below if you want to discuss this uh, we're always available through email if you want more information 
Deadly Tarantula Girl at yahoo.com. And that's also where you can reach us on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, or TikTok. So check us out. Thank you guys, everybody, for joining us. Um, the Multiverse Guy is on. New Mexico Royals is on. Aqua Balls. Kevin Trappin. Kelly Brown. Maria Zamora. Jeff Witt, uh, Lorga, I think, logged off because he had a flight to catch. Merry Christmas, everyone. We love you guys. Tarantula Jake, Bobby Evans, Lauren Nelson. You guys are awesome. You are why we keep doing this. And um, I feel really gross because I just ate a cricket on camera a little while ago. So make sure and watch that, too. And uh, be sure if you're not a subscriber, uh, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and uh, keep watching. We're going to keep putting out videos until YouTube tells us we can't anymore, or they give us a $32,000 fine, then we're done. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kappa. <laughs> Take care, guys, and have a great night. Um, if we don't catch you before then, uh, before the end of the year, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year's. I hope everybody has a blessed day. Bye.